Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today we're gonna be taking a look on Top Pro Revenge Scammers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to do so, hit that bell notification sign, and leave me a comment in the end of this video to let me know how you like the new style of BND. And now with our video. Was bored at work, so got a guy fired and possibly sent to jail for fraud. I work the night shift as a receptionist at a hotel in Norway, and most nights are spent watching Netflix playing games. Last summer was really slow, and I also work a lot of extra, so I ran out of stuff to watch and games to play. One night I got an email from Scooter. He wanted to book a room for almost 20 days. I just had to send him the price and confirmation that we had rooms available, and he would then send me his credit card info for me to pre-charge. Normally, we just delete these kinds of mail, but I was bored out of my mind. So I responded with an offer of around 2,000 for the entire stay. I also made sure to inform him that he could cancel for free up to until the day of arrival. This was probably the most common fraud attempt in the hotel travel industry. Unlike most businesses, we're able to charge debit credit cards with only one card number and expiration date. No need for PIN code, CVC, or other authorization methods. Our software also allows us to deposit money directly to local international bank accounts by using the card number. Because of this, shitheads like Scooter will try to prepay with stolen skimmed cards, but then cancel the booking and and asked us to refund the amount to a different card. A couple of hours after sending him the offer, he responded with a visa number and told me to charge him as soon as possible. I checked the card with our validation software, and to my big surprise, it did not belong to Scooter. If validation succeeds, it will return with the card owner's name 90% of the time. I sent him a new email stating that the card was declined because of insufficient funds. He quickly replied and gave me a new card to try. Guess what? This one didn't belong to Scooter either. It wasn't even the same person as the first card. By checking the BIN code, six first digits, I found which banks had issued the cards, not even issued in the same country. My plan was to just call the banks and inform them of the attempted scam, but there were still several hours before I could go home, so I decided to screw with Scooter a bit more, sending him a reply that the second card went through and also the reference number for his stay in our hotel. As expected, a couple of hours later, Scooter sent a mail canceling the order and asked if I could refund the money to a different card, as he had lost his wallet and deactivated the card he paid with. This card was issued from a Polish bank. Not sure why, but Polish bank accounts are often used by people who want to launder money from Bitcoin or drugs. You can buy a legit card for around $500 that is registered to some guy girl in Poland from Darknet. At this point, Scooter were probably pretty happy about the 2000 he soon would receive. I replied that it was no problem for me to transfer the money to a different card, as long as it was valid. How fun would that be to also cancel his own card, so that he had to spend $500 for a new one? Not fun enough. In my last mail, I wrote that he could send me the card number, but that our email server would go down for maintenance in a few minutes. My boss would do it on Monday. It was now Saturday morning, so enough time for the chart bank to call us and reverse the transfer. If he needed the money right away, I told him to call the hotel before I ended my shift, 7 o'clock. called almost immediately, and I wrote down the card number and his phone number. told him I transferred the money and that it would be in his account by 12. My shift ended and I went home with all the info Scooter had provided. wanted to see if I could find out who he was, and of course this idiot had an open Facebook profile and I found using his phone number. He even listed his address and employer. looked a bit like the artist Scooter, but with even more messed up face and spiky hair full of gel. He lived somewhere outside of London, in an area we describe as British Trailer Park. Houses that were nice at some point, but where the owners had spent zero on maintenance since it was built. Trash everywhere and broken windows that were boarded up were fixed by sealing holes with garbage. Now to the fun part. According to his Facebook profile, Scooter worked in a hotel. This meant that he would have access to card information from guests that booked through sites like Booking.com. I called the manager of the hotel and told him there were reason to believe that one of his employees were trying to commit credit card fraud, and that the card numbers could belong to their guests. Gave him the name of the people who owned the card Scooter tried to pay with. And to no surprise, both had stayed in the hotel. I told him it was Scooter and the manager just exploded in anger. Not 100% sure what he said because he was screaming so loud, but I think Scooter wasn't a normal employee. He worked there through some kind of government training program or something. After talking to the manager, I called both Visa and MasterCard International and told them about Scooter's little business venture. Apparently, it's pretty easy to check if there are more cards that have been involved in fraud, where the cards also have been used at Hotel Scooter. With his Polish deposits account info, they would also be able to pin it on Scooter if he had been successful in scamming anyone, and sue him for the amount stolen. The police also called me later to get a statement regarding the whole situation, so I know that the manager reported to the police. Not sure what happened to Scooter, but according to his Facebook profile, he no longer works in the hotel, or anywhere else as far as I can see. Alright guys, I have to tell you this, credit card scams are a really big deal, and you guys have to really be careful, the most when passing your credit card information, be it through the telephone, the internet, or anything else. The best thing is use some service like PayPal because any problems they can mostly reverse the, the transaction so just be careful out there. 
Pyramid Scheme Scammer ends up pain the end. About six or seven years ago, I was trying to enlist into the military. I ended up not joining, but that's a story for another time. At this point, I was led to believe I was about four months away from leaving for boot camp. I was running out of savings and needing a part-time job for some spending cash while I waited around. So I did what any enterprising 20-something would do and searched Craigslist for jobs. I normally hate sell jobs, especially those based in commissions, but figured it would be a great way to earn some extra cash short term. Found a few job listings that looked promising and put out some applications. A few days later, I received a call from David. He was opening up a new store and needed associates. He liked my resume and asked if I'd be available for an interview on Friday morning. I was very upfront with him and let him know that the distance was a bit more than I normally drive for a retail job and asked what he was offering for an hourly rate to see if it was worth the drive. He told me that they were planning and offering an hourly rate in the mid-teens, along with commissions. Seemed like an okay deal, so I agreed to be there Friday at 8 o'clock. Friday arrives as a cold rainy day. I wore a nice shirt and tie and driving heavy traffic to the address David had provided. I knew the area from the previous job and eventually found the strip mall I was looking for. However, I'm not seeing any signage for the company name that was listed. There is, however, one empty space with no signage and two people inside. Okay, maybe they haven't gotten the store set up yet. No big deal. I had arrived early, knowing how bad traffic can be in that area. While in my car, I witnessed a young lady in business casual dress remove a sign from the window stating retail space for rent. Call 1-800-blah-blah-blah. Okay, a little weird, but maybe it's the first day in the space. I walk about five minutes early and immediately my BS meter goes from yellow to the highest level. Black watch blade. The tables are all simple plastic folding tables. The kind of college kids would buy for beer pong while on a shopping trip to Target. The walls are plastered with laminated charts featuring tons of dollar signs, smiling face from stock photos and an organizational short showing an all familiar shape. A pyramid, god damn it. Alright, might as well have fun for a while to wait out traffic going home. The young lady in the dress approached me, introduced herself in silly. She welcomed to the company name and asked me to have a seat. She sat at her desk and nodded her plastic table and pretended to go through some paperwork. However, she was really just shuffling papers around. We get to chatting and I ask how long she's worked for David. She says she's been his secretary for about six months and that I'm going to love it in here. Eventually, a guy walks out of the back office, early 30s, clean cut, wearing the new fitting suit from JC Dennis. As he's walking over all smiles and says, Oh, Dennis, our newest recruit is here. The guy stops in his tracks and give a cold stare. It it's David, Cindy. We've been over this. He turns back to me and gives me his brightest. Hard to find good help here these days, smile. Dave David sits me down and welcomes me, saying that they're going to start with a group interview and has me to sit down in a circle of chairs. Eventually, more people come in and sit down. David gets up and begins to thank us all for coming. He tells us about an exciting new opportunity from Cutco. He pulls out a set of knives and explains how with his company we can make as much money as we want, all while setting our own hours. He even pulls out a textbook saying about how this company's revolutionary tactics have even been featured in college textbooks. He opens to a page, is hand covering parts of it, making sure we can all clearly see the words Cutco in large letters on the page. Sad to say, a lot of other interviewers were very impressed by this. One pregnant girl seemed very excited that she could work around her pregnancy and upcoming birth. David was going on and on about how much money he made and how hard workers will rise to the top quickly. At this point, David said he needed to make a quick phone call and gave us five minutes to have some coffee, chit chat, whatever. As he stepped away, he left his college textbook behind. Oops. So I pick it up, find the, find the earmarked page and read. As I thought, it was all about pyramid schemes and it had Cutco as one of the largest examples. It goes on to talk about how these are essentially scams, not economically viable, etc, etc. So I decide to share this with all the group. I explain how pyramid schemes work and how he's just scamming us. They seem incredulous. So I said when David gets back to ask them about what we need to pay to get started. That finally got everyone to realize what was going on. David walks in a few minutes later and one of the girls in the group asked David what we need to get started. Well, all you need is your first set of knives to demonstrate. You can sell that on directly or have them order one and keep that as your demo kit. Doesn't matter. Just have to pay the startup fees for it. And that's when all hell broke loose. One kid started to get up and tell him to go screw himself, saying he's wasted our time and he's a douchebag for trying to pull this crap. The pregnant lady is crying because she thought she found a place that would allow her to work despite being pregnant. David's clearly confused and flustered and asking who told them all this. When Nick becomes apparent, I'm the range of the machine, David gets upset and starts telling me to leave. People are yelling at David, David's yelling at me. Cindy's trying to tell everyone she never met David before today and didn't know 
what that stuff was. Eventually, we all walk out, leaving David behind. As I'm walking to the door, I see leaning against a wall the sign that was in the window before retail space for rent. Call 1-800-blah-blah. As I get into my car, I dial the number. Eventually, I get to a person and ask about the property for rent at the location of David's company. The nice lady on the phone apologized, saying they had just leased the property out. I asked if she knew how long the lease was for, as I was really interested in the property. She said she wasn't sure they hadn't done the official paperwork yet. They were in their way to the space to sign everything with the leaseholder in a few hours. I told her everything that had just happened to me and about David using the space for a pyramid scheme. She got extremely upset, saying that this stuff happens all the time in the industry. They'll go to sign and last minute the leaseholder will decide to opt out after using it for some fly-by night operation. She thanked me for the info and I thought that was the end of it. Or so I thought. A few weeks later, I received an email from David telling me how I ruined his life, about how the property management found out what was going on and weren't refunding his down payment on the space, saying he violated the clause and the paperwork he signed to hold the property. How he knew I was the one who called because I'm a terrible human being, etc. Now he was thousands for the space and supplies, how he only wanted to give us jobs and help us. It was a long, very angry email with several things said about me and my mother. So I called 1-800-blah-blah again, spoke with the same lady I did before, and she was very interested in the email from David, where he essentially admitted to what he was trying to do, said it would help them all with legal proceedings, and don't know, I was more than happy to send that email along to her. Her lawyer said it should be an open and shut case at this point. I like to think I'm a helper, the LDR, because someone complained, read the damn story or don't, added. Apparently, this made the front page. Thanks, guys. I feel like I should say something important here while I have the attention. Mm, pay attention, kids. Don't be silly. Wrap your willy. Double added. Everyone commenting that they're downvoting or not reading due to the TLDR. Grow up, you dildos. It's an internet site for meaningless garment. Get over it. What do I have to say after this comment? Get over it. And if you don't, like I always say, you're the goddamn problem. Scammers want access to my computer. I turn the tables and start wiping their computer. The LDR, same as the title. A friend told me that this belongs in here. I have read Man's Top Pro Revenge and I think that this may or may not belong here. So mods, if it doesn't, just let me know and I'll take it down and put it wherever it might belong. Background. I got our home phone number long before cell phones were a common thing to have. As things have evolved, that phone number is part of my history and it's utilitarian to use for things I don't want ring on my cell phone. Like 99% of any Anything that requires a phone number for no good reason. So I have kept that phone number alive over the years. Most recently, I moved it a few years back to an online service that charts a tiny amount of money per month to host it for me. I access it via SIP clients on my computer. The story. Because of the nature of the phone number, it randomly rings. If I have time to mess with whoever's calling, most of the calls are the your car warranty is about to expire kind. Some of the calls are about no existent credit cards. My favorite calls are the scammers. I record all the calls that come into this phone number. In my States, only one person needs to know that a call is being recorded and besides, these scammers are all overseas so I really do not care about their laws. So when a scammer calls, I tend to answer and play along. Sometimes these calls last a few minutes before they give up on me. Today I set a new record, a total of one hour of their time wasted. The call comes in as normal, I string the guy along, I play dumb, I keep them thinking I'm an easy target. After 40 minutes, I tell him I have to hang up and could he call me back in an hour. To my surprise, this idiot calls me back. So I decide to see if I could get him to let me connect him by continuing to play dumb. My plan is based on knowing that they have a handful of tools at their disposal, easiest of which is TeamViewer. So I play along until they get me on a TeamViewer, but I never give them the real information on my end and I just ask for my partner ID. The idea is that with TeamViewer, you can switch who is showing the screen after you make the initial connection. I know that I have but a precious few seconds of time if I manage to get him to give me their ID and password to make my plan happen. So I have a dummy terminal set aside for all this. I quickly write out my set of commands so I can copy them to my clipboard and launch them as soon as I can get connected. Sure enough, they give me their ID and password. I am ready and I strike. Paste the commands into a run window and let it rip. As I see the window pop up with the command prompt and the deletion of folder starts, the guy starts to stutter and ask, What are you doing, sir? I keep playing dumb until my connection is terminated. Files have been deleted, the scammer's pissed. He starts to curse at me, eventually starts taunting him and cursing back at him. After a while, he hangs up. Look, I know that they have cloned systems and they'll be back up and 
scam running no time at all, but this wastes an hour of their time and that's an hour they can't use to scam someone else. Proof, the recording of the call. Added, so I woke up to 8,000 votes, quad silver, triple gold and platinum. Thank you kind renters. I can't reply to everyone, but the details of most all the questions are already on the replies from last night. Added too. More silver, gold and platinum. You guys are too kind. Thank you very much. Every single one that I have tried that was suggest does not allow cross posting. So maybe some of their mods will see this post and make an exception. Guys, like I mentioned before, you know, someone gets you through the internet or anything. Don't freaking do it. I hear every single day about people getting scammed. It's just sad. Most they do it with older people, not as much with young guys. I mean, most are really computer savvy, so you don't get to that. But most old folks, I mean, if you guys can, always warn your grandparents and the most or your parents if you're in a certain age and not really tech savvy and help them out because those people got to stop, you know what I mean? And don't forget to subscribe, hit that notifications button and give us a like and a comment. Have a great day.